So, so far so good, is that okay? Um, what I wanna now do um, is I want to uh, move forward and maybe you could actually help me by drawing this diagram. I want to rehearse for you this idea of proving if we come from this polar formula, which is the definition, right? Um, the polar formula is, is slightly a pain because you've got to work out the angle. Like you've got to know what theta is. And normally when you get given a vector, um, you, or rather two vectors, you know their x's and y's and z's, right? You know them in component form or in column form, same deal, right? So you don't normally know what theta is, it takes some effort to work out what theta is. And so what we want is an alternative way to express the dot product that is independent of theta, okay? Now, maybe if it's you know reasonably recent, you might have the proof of this fresh in your mind. Um, so I'm not going to go through this in um, uh, minute detail, um, but we're going to show how, in fact, this result still works in three dimensions, just like it worked in two dimensions, okay? So, um, for starters, right, you have a look at this triangle here formed between um, the origin and then I've got B and A positioned in arbitrary places. It really doesn't matter where they are, okay? Now, I want to get some expression for this that has, um, that will allow me to eliminate cos theta, okay? So you can see I've drawn this triangle because once I've got a triangle, I can use the cosine rule on this triangle. Does that make sense? The cosine rule allows me to find an expression for cos theta um, that doesn't have any thetas in it. Like the cosine rule, if you guys remember it, actually help me, help me recite it, right? Cos of, we normally say like cos of capital C. Um, I wonder if you remember, it's a fraction, right? Do you remember this? What's on the top? Um, I know it not with cos C like my as the As the subject? I remember it like the Pythagoras. Oh, okay, yeah, that's totally fine. Let's, let's just go from there, because um, if you remember that, it's the same formula, right? It only takes a bit of rearrangement. So um, yeah. help me out. What's the bit on the right-hand side? Yeah, so just, yeah, um, a squared plus b squared yep. minus 2ab cos theta. Okay, fantastic. Or, or in this case, because I've got a's, b's, and c's, I've, I'll just put capital C. Yeah. Um, exactly right. Um, and by the way, just for what it's worth, this is also the way I remember it. Like, I remember... Uh, the cosine rule as Pythagoras' theorem on steroids. Okay, that's the way I think about it. However, you can see what I could do is, see the c squared and the, the 2ab cos c, you can see I can basically add and subtract them from both sides of the equation um, and then divide through. So what you'll end up getting is a squared plus b squared, that's, that's still there. I have to subtract the c squared from both sides and then you divide through by that constant coefficient that gives you 2ab, right? So can you see here, if I use the cosine rule on this triangle that we've just drawn with the vectors on it, right? I can get an expression for cos, well, like you said, theta, right? That doesn't have any thetas in it, right? This thing on the right-hand side, it's independent of theta. It's just in terms of the lengths of the sides, okay? So just to remind you, right? Um, if we, um, I, I want to know what all three sides are. So I can say, look, um, the length of that purple vector there is just uh, the, the magnitude of b, right? Is that okay? Like so. Um, and then I can say the length of the green side is just the magnitude of vector a, like so. All I need is an expression for the magnitude of that third side, a, b. Um, and I can do that using vector thinking, right? Hopefully you r recognize. You don't have to draw this, by the way, but um, it's just a reminder. If I reversed uh, that B vector, right, then it's the same as saying, okay, I can go from B um, to O, and then from O to A, I'm just gonna string those vectors together. You might remember the fancy word, concatenate. So that's minus B plus A, um, which I've written up the top here. Does that make sense? And so really what I've got here, returning to my original triangle, OAB, this length over here is just the magnitude of A, minus b. Are you guys content with that? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So what I'm going to now do is, you can see I've got some working already here. Please don't fret too much if I uh, go too quickly through this. I'm just looking at the time. Um, for you to write, don't, don't stress too much about writing this, right? Um, because I will give you these notes afterwards, just like I have with other notes. However, if it does help you to write, then, then keep up with me, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm first just going to state, you know how, um, just like you said, Sean, uh, this was the cosine rule stated in that Pythagoras form uh, that you stated up here, right? This one here. In fact, you know what? Let me just drag that down here. 
Here it is. This is the cosine rule, but for this triangle. Does that make sense? So I've got my AB, uh, which I've got up the top here. So that's AB just along there. Um, and then I've got OA squared, um, OB squared, and, and so on. Is that okay? So far, so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those um, lengths with vector notation versions of those lengths, right? So you can see um, this is what I'm calling AB in vector notation. Um, I've got um, the OA and the OB. Um, you can see I've, I've highlighted this. So I'm going to write it basically like so. Is this all right? Okay, now here is the part where you're going to see why I'm like, okay, don't worry too much about writing this because it gets very long very quickly, okay? Uh, let's have a think about the left-hand side, right? The left-hand side is just the distance from A to B. It's the distance from A to B, right? So this is just the Pythagoras. It's the very, very long Pythagoras formula. Do you remember that? Uh, except it is, it is squared. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to erase that. It is squared, so normally you know you'd see that big long square root, but because I'm squaring it, that thing's gone. Okay, so do you remember this is basically what we get? You take the difference of the x's, difference of the y's, difference of the z's, and you square everything. Okay, so all of this, all of this came from just uh, that term. So far, so good. Okay, uh, on the right hand side, what I want to do is, again, there's going to be um, some long notation here, right? So to, to highlight what's going on here, I'm going to separate out, I'll make this vector here, I'll highlight that as blue. Actually, you know what, that's a bit silly. I've already got a color for that. I've got like green or something, right? So this is this, is this vector up here, okay? That's going to be my green one. I've got um, a purple one. I've written uh, that B vector in purple. So this is what I'm going to follow with here. So I want you to remember, what's the magnitude of the vector just from the origin? That's what it is, right? Um, hopefully, you can see it, it ends up quite long. This is what you recall. Is that okay? You just do the x's, the y's, and z's, you square them. Then, uh, and that was this one here. So this is b. And then this other one is, is from a. Are you right there? I know it's a lot of algebra, but uh, hopefully we're following along. So far, so good. Okay, now at this point here, even though it's long and awkward, there's actually a lot of cancelling that I can do if you arrange it a bit more easily. Now normally we frown upon having equations written on multiple lines, but you can see how long this thing is, and actually it's easier if I write this across a few lines so that you can see the structure, right? So what I've got here is, um, I've squared everything out. Can you see that? So say for example, if you just focus on uh, this, this first one over here, this here. Can you see that's my first line? x squared uh, minus 2xx plus x squared again, right? So far so good. You can see the subscripts, okay? Um, so each line is, it's the x's and then the y's and then the z's, okay? Over on the right hand side, um, I actually haven't done anything different. I've just arranged it so that you can see these terms here um, separate from these terms here. All right, can you guys tell me how am I going to go about cancelling this? What am I going to do? You can cancel the squares because Yeah, very good. So you can see um, the x, y, z for the a's, right? That's, that's all of these terms in here. And then the x, y, z's for the b's, that's all these terms here. So just when we square everything out, normally expanding things makes things an awful mess. But in this case, it's fine. So they're all going to cancel. In fact, I'm going to say like that cancels with that, does that make sense? And then that cancels with that. So all we get left with is uh, these uh, minus two uh, x's, minus two y's, and so on. We just get left with these terms in the middle. And you can see all of them, if I just write them out across ways, um, you can see there's going to be all of that comes from, that's a terrible brace, sorry, let's try and make that bit better. There we go. Can you see where I've gotten that from? Uh, what can you now see, obviously, that I can uh, divide through by on both sides? Negative two. Yep, that's a common factor of negative two. So when, there I am. But once you notice, like if you divide through by negative two on the right hand side, you just end up with this, which is our definition of the dot product. So that's why I've just replaced it with that on the right hand side. So are you content, can you see how I end up with this, even though we define it as like it's to do with the angles, I have this version of it 
um, which is to do with um, all of the components, okay? So, how are you going? Do, were you able to follow that algebra? Do you have any questions about that so far? Okay, fantastic. So here's my favorite bit, okay? And you'll actually, weirdly, you'll need to sit together for this one. So I don't know who wants to move, but one of you needs to move. And, um, okay, Sean, you're moving. Ryan, do you have two pens on your desk there? Okay, so I need you to have two pens. And um, the, the part about this that is wild for me is, right? Just go back to our, our first comment here. We said, oh, what's a guess for why, or, or how rather, we can extend the um, two-dimensional formula for the dot product into three dimensions, right? And you um, very accurately said this. You're like, oh, with component form, it's really easy. You had X's and Y's, just, just added Z's, right? And for me, it was always really sensible to do that. But then I thought, well, but hold on. This polar formula, we just, we just derived in three dimensions that it's exactly the same in three dimensions as it is in two dimensions, right? I want to prove to you why that actually makes sense, that even though the three-dimensional formula in component form changes, the, t the, the, the three-dimensional formula in polar form does not change. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. In fact, I need two pens as well. Um, here's what I want you to do. The first one, um, we're not going to do, you can actually do this independently. I want you to take your two pens and I want you to imagine them as two vectors, okay? So um, take the lids off so you can see I've got one facing this way, one facing that way, okay? Now obviously, if you guys could just take the two pens, just put them on the table for a minute, right? Lay them on the table and um, you can see no matter where you put them, if you put them like pretty randomly, right? Obviously your two vectors, they sit on the same plane, which is the table, right? So the name for this is they are coplanar. Um, it's just like collinear. Collinear means two or three points on the same line. Um, coplanar means you've got two vectors, they're on the same plane, okay? Now here's the part where I need two of you, okay? Um, I want one of you to hold up the two pens, take the two pens, and then I want the other of you to hold up your book. Your book is going to be the plane, okay? So Sean, you've got the book. All right, now, yep, okay. Now, Ryan, what I want you to do is, in, in mid-air, in three-dimensional space in front of your face, okay, um, just keep the tails together. But I want you to face the two vectors in any random direction that you like, okay, in an arbitrary directions. Um, so, just face them anywhere. And now, Sean, your challenge is, after Ryan's picked two directions, right, I want you to place your book on the plane that is shared by those two vectors. Can you go ahead and do that? Find, find a plane somewhere, so you're gonna to need to move your book so that it is like matched up against those two pens. Have you found a spot? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, that wasn't too difficult, right? Now, Ryan, it looks to me like you made that really easy for Sean, okay? I want you to try again. I want you to make it somewhere weirder and wackier, right? Place the two vectors in two other different directions, any way you like, yeah, yeah. Try, try and like get off, off plane, right? Okay. And now, wherever you end up, are you starting to realize, Sean? Go ahead. Take your book again. Wherever Ryan places his two vectors, yeah, very good. You have to put it in a different orientation, but you can still find a plane. You can put your stuff down now. You can yeah. always find a plane. In other words, a two-dimensional surface that three-dimensional vectors will always sit on. Does that make sense? No matter where your three dimensions are, you can actually still find a two-dimensional point of view that will work um, to consider, you can see this on the screen, to consider your three-dimensional vectors as two-dimensional things, like there's a two-dimensional angle between them. So that's why the polar formula in three dimensions, it's the same as the polar formula in two dimensions. Does that make sense? Okay, um, I hope that clicked for you. It was a bit wild for me and as you can imagine, based on what you physically did, uh, it's really hard for textbooks to convey that or for pictures to convey that because they're in two dimensions, right? You've got to do it in three.